Okay, um, I don't know whether Francis chose me. I know that your, your mentor chose you, your student chose you, but thank you, Francis. Can we give a round of applause to all these guys? I'm, I am usually a very disorganized person. I really am. And I'm actually even going to go slightly over time. But, you know, Francis made my, my life so easy. He actually put up my PowerPoint for me. So thank you. Um, so yes, um, and again, I just want to warn you, some of the photos don't look like me, but they are me. You know, with age, you go a little bit bigger. And if you're in Chunking Mansions, the greatest food place, you know, you have to eat curry. So therefore, my size has also changed around. Um, so again, I'm born in Hong Kong. You know, many people have misconception of ethnic minorities. You know, that we, we took a UFO and then we just suddenly arrived at Hong Kong. No. Hong Kong had ethnic minorities for about 100 years. You know, many of our, for, you know, uh, our generations back uh, were, were here fighting in the British Army. Uh, how many of you know that the Star Ferry was actually started by an Indian man? Yeah. Now you're not going to take the Star Ferry? No. <laughs> right? But, you know, just to let you know, this is nothing new. Ethnic minorities have been here for a long time. My grandpa came in the 1960s. He worked in a hotel called the Farama Hotel, Fulai Wa Chaldi. I don't know whether you guys remember, like many places in Hong Kong, Cha Chola, right? <laughs> so I, I come from a, a middle class family. Um, my dad came and then he married my mom. Uh, and then me and my sister were born here. Uh, local born, Tosa Tocha. But very different from most of you is because we ethnic minorities were kind of forced to go into segregated schools. We went to, I went to a primary school, it was really weird because I would see Chinese people but they would not come in our section. It was morning section and afternoon section. And I went into the afternoon section with all minorities. So we would really never integrate, never speak the language. What do you end up doing is you speak English with your own minority friends. Uh, and I thought maybe secondary school it would be slightly better. But I went to secondary school, I saw Chinese friends, I said, oh great, we're going to study together. But no, they segregate you into different floors. Upper floors were all local Chinese, lower floors were all ethnic minorities. We would never go up, they would never come down. If they came down, we'd beat them up. If we went up, they'd beat us up. That was the only interaction we had. And then what was weird is they teach you English as a language, and then for ethnic minorities, they teach you a second language, which was, guess what? French. French. For five years, I, I just tried my best with that language, but Till today, all I remember is je ne sais pas en français, which means I don't know French. <laughs> so it's been a very tough time for many of my minority friends. We were really confused. You know, this was also just after 97, where Hong Kong was handed over to Chinese. We were all asking ourselves, who are we? And I myself was a minority amongst my minorities because I was very dark skinned, as you can see. I was also Christian. Uh, I really didn't speak Hindi much, so I was really more discriminated amongst the discrimination that most of my friends were facing. In school, at Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, you went through normal, no problem, but many of my friends were already starting to drop out at Form 3. Because the teachers would tell you already, right, they say, Chung San, good, they say, they call up one, Form 4, Form 5, Form 6, Form 7, oh, lam la. Because really, there was no minorities going through that. Uh, so me, I was just like, okay, I'm smart, I went past Form 3, but my best friend was already dropping out. He was already going into jail, going into rehab like it was holiday camp. Um, so that was the kind of environment I lived in. This was me. I loved football so much. All I did was to go to play football in school. And after school, I would be in the parks, in, 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 in Jordan Kung Yun, in Pun Chong Kung Yun, and playing football. But I was in the midst of a really difficult time because all my people that I hung out with were older than me already very deeply involved in triad society. Drugs was very prevalent. I had two friends who just passed away because they overdosed on drugs. Uh, this was the kind of environment uh, I was stuck in. Even though I come from a decent family, we go to church, uh, it was very hard because most of your life you spend at school and your friends. Uh, so I went to Form 5 and I failed. I only got two passes and I thought this was it. I'm dead end for me and I deeply went into the triad world as well. Fighting, partying, selling drugs, uh, stop going home, stop going to church. I really like went downhill. I thought I was untouchable because most of my Hyundai, when they were arrested, I would somehow, because I was dark and skinny at that time, I knew where to run away and hide. And I was really good at that. <laughs> uh, and I thought, you know, no problem, Moman Tiger. So this was me, I just thought, untouchable. This is, there's no other way for me. I'm not gonna study, I'm just going to go into it. I saw many of my 
Ping Dais, they were going into deep into tribal society and, and making a living out of it. Um, this is my best friend actually, um, KK, who, funny enough, we studied from kindergarten till today he's in the same building I work in. Uh, but he was already, like I said, four criminal records in rehab, uh, and I just, he tried to protect me as much as I could. Uh, but when I thought everything was going downhill for me, finally I really did hit downhill. I never forget one time I went with my Hingdai, beat up some guy, took his phone, and I ran away. And this time I was smart because I ran into a red minibus and I sat in there and I thought, sin, right? <laughs> but not this time because I remember very, this will never, I'll never forget it, six Lam OG police parade officers come in, grab me out, and then put me in a prison cell. And I was like, oh shoot, this time I'm in real trouble. Now the discrimination ethnic minority space is, is, I cannot tell you, you'll have to really try the skin on, the things I heard, things I've been through. But when you're arrested in the police station, things that happen inside, you won't believe, but it's happened. And so that's where I called all my hingdai. I said, boy, I'm in trouble now. Guess what? None of them picked up their phone. Um, most, uh, I tried to call KK, but I forgot he was in jail himself. <laughs> so, no point. As an ethnic minority, we don't call our parents because usually, I don't know about Asian par uh, Chinese parents, but still so your parents, they love to give you a good smack. So I didn't call, it was 4 a.m. Somehow, 9237-6464 came in my head because at that time, there was no iPhone, no nothing. You just have to remember numbers and when it's confiscated by the police, you're not allowed to get it back. You're allowed a few phone calls. Somehow, 9237-6464 came in my head and I think it was just God saying, this is your last chance. I called. I guess what, Fermi Wong, a wonderful social worker, Wong Waifun, she took the phone and she's, I said, Fermi, come see what Jang Dima. You know, I called my Hing Dai's, one of them picked up and said he's coming, but never came. But Fermi, Chung Kwan No, she took a taxi, came down, bailed me out. Uh, and I was sitting there getting my fingerprints, I just thought to myself, because I sat in the police station, behind me was a blackboard. The police put down ethnicities and the crimes you commit. Indian, Pakistani, and I just talked to myself, I'm just another negative statistic for my community. That was not the end of it because Fermi had to take me home at 6 a.m. Uh, you know, what do you tell your parents? You know, you've ran, you've stopped going home, you've stopped going to church. You know, I, I thought they were going to give me a good smack in front of my social worker, but they didn't. They, they just cried when they saw it, and they were like, "What has happened? This is it. You're in trouble now." Uh, and Fermi then found me lawyers. She found me a fantastic lawyer and. She went around and said, Jeff, in two months you got to go to court. Uh, and then the lawyer himself told me, Jeff, listen, ethnic minorities, once you get arrested, 70% of the time you're going to get a criminal record. 70%. 90% usually will go into jail. So Fermi somehow went to all these VIPs, NGO bosses and all that and got me reference letters. People that didn't even know me wrote, Jeff is a good boy. <laughs> it's the power of this social worker. Anyway, I went to court. Uh, I'll never forget the judge just reading all these reference letters and you know he says young boy why are you wasting your life away and I just talked to myself that's the day I hit the mark six because I came out with just a bind over so he says I'm gonna give you a bind over for one year if you commit any crime you go straight to jail of course for that one year I was the best kid in Hong Kong <laughs> uh, straight away um, so Fermi once said Jeff some of it is your fault some of it is the society, the environment, ethnic minorities. She grabbed me from that moment and we went to every government department you, you can name. We met Donald Trump to Tung Chi Wang. We said we need ethnic minorities to go into higher education because it's a vicious cycle of crime and unemployment. Every government official said, sorry for me, they need to read and write Cantonese. And she was like, you don't even teach them. How can they go past that? So there was just this back and forth. Then she said, let's go to all the universities. And I tell you, all the universities said no except one, which was VTC Ivy. They also said no. Uh, they said no, they need to read and write, even for vocational training, can you believe this? So what Fermi did was, okay, you, can't, you won't let us, our minorities say, can we buy your class? Can we pay your teachers, have a special class just you know, for ethnic minorities? They said, sure, it's gonna cost a few million dollars. Fermi says, no problem. I looked at Fermi and I said, I don't have that money. <laughs> you know? Somehow this woman, she gathered and she fundraised. Uh, we were the first batch to go into Ivy, Wong, ha Wong Haking, to study the hotel management course. Today, it's a subsidized program. Okay. I, went, I, went last week, I went last week with Fermi Wong and it's incredible because 
you know, it's now a subsidized program. There's over 200 ethnic minorities studying in different campuses, and it's 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 really uh, you know a blessing. I studied for a year, and somehow I got chosen to work in Peninsula Hotel in housekeeping. I worked for two months, and I said, this is not what I want to do. It was so tough. Um, Throughout, I try to make it as a football player. I love football so much. Every day, that's what I do. The only thing I can say I'm proud of, I was as a good football player. The school loved me so much, even though I failed, they say, come and repeat, you know, <laughs> just to play football. So this is a fantastic moment for me, it was I tried to play in all kinds of levels in Hong Kong, but it was so much discrimination. Even going to McDonald's Ching funding, you know, the, the McDonald's football scheme, I went to football association, they give you the form in Cantonese. What do I do? I took the form and I went to my Lao Ha Huang Gan Asuk Pong Wei team. Help me fill this up and we will fill it up. Um, this is a changing moment for me as I met this fantastic social worker in red and white. Dong he does homeless uh, support in, 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 in Shem Shui Bo. And he said, come and join our football team. Uh, this team gets to represent in international tournaments. I said, sure. And then he said, it's the Mogaches football team. I said, homeless football team? I said, I'm not homeless. He said, no, it's not just homeless. It's people like you with a background that's gone through a lot. So former gamblers, former drug addicts, former ex-offenders, former alcoholics, all in this team using football as a platform. And it really changed me. I, I trained hard and somehow they picked me to go to Italy to represent Hong Kong in the Homeless World Cup. Uh, I, it was really changing. Not only that, um, they also allowed me to captain this team. I said, I'm just an ethnic minority. How can I captain a team of locals? And that was when the social worker said, it's not your skin color, it's your ability and how you lead. And I think that really impacted me. Like, stop looking at your skin color as, as, a, as, as an excuse. Um, I came back, I lost my job, and somehow my mom was at a prayer meeting and she says, Chef, I found you a job. Uh, just, I went to a prayer and then this lady heard my prayers and she said, ask your son to come and interview. So she so proudly came home and she said, Chief, I found you a job. I said, Mom, really, where? She says, Chongqing Dai, Chongqing Mansions. I said, Mom, that's where I did all my bad stuff. Now you want me to go back. Uh, but I'm so proud because that's where I've worked till today. I have my wonderful colleagues out here. If you could just raise your hands. Amazing place. This is where I help refugees. Amazing people that have fled due to religious political, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff happening in the world and they run to Hong Kong. Uh, and I'm so glad through this job that I've managed to, to help people, um, re reunite people. This family is no longer here, they're in Canada now. Uh, Roma, I think you're here too. Thank you for helping me bring these kids over. Um, so this job really made me think, I need to study again, I need to get a social work degree because everywhere I was going, they're like, if you're not a Sego, we can't help you out. So Fermi Wong again came back and she said, let's fight. You know, Fermi loves fighting. And we went to universities, they said, sorry, ethnic minorities can't go into social work programs. So somehow, um, she got a school to accept us. And we, this is the first time at the age of 28 that I studied with local Chinese people. It's incredible. Four years, it was difficult at times, but today I'm best friends. I actually ended up in four weddings. Um, you know, these are great people. And uh, for me, uh, football also, I went back and I thought, coaching, I want to be a coach. I can't be a player, let me be a coach. And, uh, you know, uh, throughout this moment, my mom was an amazing supporter. Somehow, I disappointed her all my life, uh, but she really stood by me. For me, the most painful thing is I graduated just six months after she passed away. Uh, and it still hurts me, all the accomplishments I got. That's my graduation day. Somehow I think God's sign that she, uh, you know, the, the graduation was on her birthday. Fermi Wong was there, she was like, I can't believe it. A few years ago I was bailing you out, signing a sheet today, I have your social work, you know, license. So it's, it's for me it's great. So we kept fighting. I couldn't be a football coach, I couldn't be a football player, I tried to be a football coach. Football association, beautiful words. Again, you need to read and write Cantonese for the exam. It's like, wow. You know? Uh, so Fermi Wong said, let's fight. And she got one of the best footballers to fight with us, Santosi, amazing guy. He's an ethnic minority, British, Portuguese. And he heard, what is wrong with the system? And he came out, and what Fermi always told me, go to the media. It's the most powerful tool. If Because Hong Kong people, if they are good judges and they feel it's injustice, they'll support you. And when we went to the media, the Football Association called me the next day saying, why did you go to the media? We're changing it to English. <laughs> So, me and my bio, we went back, thank you, to study, uh, and 
you know, very difficult. Again, most of the course was in Cantonese, but somehow we passed. Today we're coaches uh, with a D license. We're looking to study further ahead. Painful moment for me to share is my mom. You know, in Hong Kong, when you die, we know you have to pay, right? You need to wait. It's a, it's a crazy thing. But we're Christians, so you know, in Bofula, there's the Chinese Christian cemetery. Anyone heard of that? Beautiful, beautiful um, cemetery just behind, uh, in front of the um, Queen Mary Hospital. And they replied back with a letter saying, sorry, your mom is Christian, but she's not Chinese. And I was like, wow, even in death, you are segregated. Um, and what did Fermi Wong do with me and my dad? Go to the media. And the next day, a priest, a high priest, read about our story, and he got really upset, and he wrote to the, to the big, big guys in the church. And today, my mom is the only colored person in the cemetery. Uh, people still look at us when we go in really weirdly, but you know, maybe in a few years, no, nobody would do that. Um, so I'm very lucky to honor my work with these fantastic people that we got to fight discrimination, injustice, not just for ethnic minorities, for refugees, for anyone that has no voice. Uh, and we are so grateful that so many people support. Uh, this is not when I was arrested. This is when I actually was called back to the police station to train police officers. <laughs> Senior officers, some of them even apologize for the way they, they, they do things. So, thank you. Uh, in 2014, I know I'm overrun. Uh, in 2014, thanks to Unison, I went to the United Nations in Geneva to report about segregated schools. Uh, of course, the government was also there because they have to answer back to the UN and they are saying, oh no, there's no such thing as segregated schools. That's the wrong thing they should have never done. And today they're making changes slowly. You're seeing more and more examples. Uh, I know I've overrun quite a bit. Um, just wanted to share, because of this moments that I've really started to think we minorities have to take things on our own hand. One of the great things we've organized is, you know, uh, vigils for, for the Nepal earthquake and, 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 and things like that. We, just a group of five people, we got together and somehow, uh, you know, we raised over 100,000, over 3,000 people showed up at Star Fair just for a vigil and we were very transparent. We showed that you don't need people with so much influence, we need to join a political party, therefore you can do things. So somehow it shows five people we can do it. And somehow we, we um, got a group called Minority Initiative now. And every Choyat we do street sleepers and, and, and we go to Shamsaibo and, and serve. Uh, and one of my proudest moments is come, you know, partnering with my agency. If you guys remember um, Typhoon Mangut, and there was a viral video of an African gentleman sweeping streets in Chim Sa Choy. Who was that guy? He was one of our clients in Christian Action. He came back and he said, Jeff, can we do more? And I said, it's a huge risk, are you sure? And what is the risk? I said, well, we're gonna get discriminated more, people are gonna think we're, you know, all sorts of stuff. Somehow, we persevered. We're together with refugees and asylum seekers uh, and, and ethnic minorities, we went and swept the streets and parks in Tobama. I'll never forget it, as we went in, 15 of us, I saw all the elderly look at us and one of them said, Wow, come to Hakwaye. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh shoot, this is bad. But anyway, my client was like, what did he say? I said, doesn't matter, just clean. Somehow we cleaned parks for two days. Uh, one of the last things I'll leave before, uh, I know I've overrun quite a bit, is I remember some of the popos, as we were cleaning up these parks, they were like using it and using it. And two of them disappeared and I thought, oh no, they're feeling bad about it. But they left and they bought bags of polo bao and vitali to come back and share with our African refugee friends and ethnic minorities. It was one of the most touching moments in my life because, you know, this is the first time one of my African guys has Vitali. And he said, it's amazing. But it just shows you don't need to do much. You don't need to, you know, promote much. If you just have a human interaction, so many things can be solved in a city like Hong Kong. So I hope with that, we don't give up on our beloved city, Mofong Hong Kong. Thank you very much.